So I think uh, I think we're ready. It's uh, seven o'clock, and uh, we had some minutes of you know the the, the logo. So if anybody's joining right now, uh, what you see on the screen is this is actually our uh, imtimeloop.org page. It's really the the main. Uh, it's really the the only page for that for that domain, and we set it up there to uh, kind of count down to the end of this uh, social experiment that uh, we are uh, performing, and it just happens that that experiment does also end on December twenty first, two thousand and twelve. So if you are, if you have multiple, uh, if you if you're promoting the date for other reasons, uh, hey, feel free to use this awesome countdown clock. And then one benefit of that is that if uh, it clicks right to our page, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. And whatever time zone you're in, I think this works. Yeah, this must work because yours says uh, six there, Nick. So whatever time zone you're in, uh, this. Countdown clock is actually going to count down uh, for you. So in Fargo, it's going to count down, you know, on Friday. In Kathmandu, uh, it's going to count down earlier uh, compared to ours. So this can this particular page, IamTimeLoop.org, uh, can be used globally for anybody that would like to have uh, a good graphic uh, to display this this countdown at their event. And it just so happens that it will also link back to our uh, global experiment page. So that's pretty cool. And uh, if you're tuning in, just so you know, we uh, Nick and I haven't gotten much sleep lately. <laughs> we've been uh, we've been working really hard, uh, and then we've also been uh, celebrating very hard. Uh, so anytime that we make some of the milestones, you know, we're, we we really celebrate. So we're starting to get worn out, and as I see that we have 15 more days, <laughs> I'm wondering that maybe one of these nights, maybe we should probably go to bed. Going to bed sounds like a really nice idea, actually. Some sleep. Um, I was up until about 5:30 working on um, some PR stuff, and uh, well, you saw starting starting our campaign. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna just show my video for a second here. So yeah, pop start. in. Yeah, there you go. Hello, world. Hello, um, Nick. Yeah, I love well, your fireplace. <laughs> I, I'm try, doing my best to be able to show both my fireplace and the uh, and my head without having it actually chopped off. No, I think it's you look very uh, chill and relaxed there. Uh, what's the weather like over on the uh, over in Portland? Uh, well, it was, it was mostly mostly uh, cloudy today, um, a little bit rainy, and uh, um, <clears throat> now the sun's going down, of course, and we're supposed to have some pretty nice weather, but. Uh, the temperature today was uh, was rather nice, uh, 50, 50 degrees. It's 50 right now. Um, probably a little warmer than you. Do you have snow on the ground in Fargo? Uh, we did. However, the snow has has since melted, and now uh, it's cold enough for the snow to be around. But it just we haven't gotten any more uh, since uh, the last time. Uh, I have another person that's gonna that's hanging out here with me today. At, uh, uh, her name's Bella. Bella, are you gonna? She's sleeping on my lap. So I just wanted to bring her into the conversation. <laughs> but uh, so, if you're if you're, I think we might be pushing the bandwidth limits of uh, of of the uh, house that you're at because as soon as Casey tries starts to pop in here, that was it. Oh, that's very possible. If he's not uh, going to contribute, maybe he should watch on the um, going to Facebook. <laughs> I think he's gonna continue. I think he's planning on contributing. Oh, he just popped off. Not on my end. I still see him. So Casey has been working. He's one of the ones that has also been working hard and partying hard with us. <laughs> and he's been busily uh, editing the uh, time loop uh, pledge uh, videos. And later after this one hour uh, fire what are we, uh, fireside uh, yeah. discussion. <laughs> We are going to release uh, a sneak peek of the timeline of the actual. Oh, sorry, it's popping up for me in front of me. Re releasing a sneak peek of the actual video, uh, and, and what you'll see in the sneak peek is the opening of the pledge videos, and then uh, and that's basically all we're showing. But I believe either tomorrow or the next day, depending on how late we stay up tonight, uh, we will be able to release an actual full uh, one of the full pledges. 
probably tomorrow evening. Uh, and so you can see the one of the full videos. Uh, and then every day after that, uh, we're going to try to continue to release one a day. And I believe we have 14 uh, pledge videos. I believe total we have 14. And that just kind of worked out that way because if you look at the, what was the clock? What does the clock say again, Nick? Uh, my clock says uh, that we've got 15 days, 6 hours, 51 minutes, and 14 seconds. So it just seemed to work out exactly right. So we'll have a, our first one ready for tomorrow, and we have exactly 14 days. Uh, so, and, and that's kind of how this project has been going. It seems like everything uh, has been kind of falling in place. I'm not saying it hasn't been a lot of work, but everything seems to have been falling in, in, into place uh, and just kind of getting done and right the right 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 the right time and 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 just high quality and, and the way that I kind of expected uh, it to look the way I saw these things in my head these guys are all you guys here are making like me the happiest person in the entire world <laughs> I feel like all my dreams are coming true and it's all because of all of you thank you so much <laughs> but uh the uh let's see well, let's let's talk about again. I'm worse. I'm sorry. I haven't had much sleep, so I, I might be rambling a little bit. Uh, but let's talk about. Uh, we have one hour. Uh, we've already wasted ten minutes blabbing. <laughs> we can let's 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 talk about the project. Uh, I recently uh, had a great experience to uh, uh, talk in front of a mass media uh, 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 class. Mass class, yeah. Yep, at Morehead State University. And uh, that was that was really fun to actually stand up in front of a, li a live live people, like a whole a lot of people I haven't uh, met before, and, and kind of discuss this. Uh, however, it was also very terrifying for me because I'm not I'm not normally a uh, get in front of a lot of people person, but I I feel that I probably gonna have to get used to that, and uh, especially as we go more and more uh, into this, and as we get more and more. Uh, all of us are going to be called it to do things that we aren't that comfortable doing, but uh, it's something that you know needs to be done. So, uh, but basically, we uh, I, I think we, we I, I saw a lot of moments where at first people when we we, we kind of discussed the uh, the project or the experiment, uh, you know, they I think they thought that I was insane. Who is this insane guy here in the classroom? <laughs> But as we started giving more details on time travel and just the progress that we've made uh, in the last hundred years, and you know potentially thinking what we might figure out in the next one hundred years, I started getting uh, really good questions. And I wish I would have kept the stream going because the, the questions kind of happened after I turned the stream off, where people really started getting engaged. Uh, so we're hoping that if you're listening this evening, uh, this is why we're doing this, and, and that we're. Nick and I are going to try to do this, you know, several more times. Uh, you know, as many times as we can, but yet yeah, continue to do other stuff. But yeah. just to open up uh, an hour, so if you have any questions, uh, you know, we can just try to answer any questions. Yeah. And, so something but, else I think we might want to consider because when I'm, when I po post these events and then I go and I check what time it is currently on the other side of the planet, and that's really where we've got um, right a large piece of our following. Um, yeah. When I when I take a look at those things, I think, well, what time would we have to do something to reach people at a, a reasonable hour on the other side of the planet? So, right. Do you know where GMT zero 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 is? Is that in London? I think it might be. I'm not sure, but I know Kathmandu is is like um, there. You know, it's basically 12 hours off. It's like 12 hours 45 minutes, and and our biggest uh, crowd so far is Kathmandu, uh, Nepal, still. And so for them, I'm guessing a good time would be like eight in the morning our time, or seven in the morning our time, which would be about seven p.m. their time. Am I getting that right? <laughs> maybe, maybe we should take a Saturday or a Sunday. I, I guess I also yeah. another consideration is the um, the culture of the area. If they, you know, you wouldn't want to on, on a Sabbath day where, you know, if we were after people that don't use electricity on Sunday, ask them to join our webcast. Uh, but we should right. maybe try and schedule something on a Saturday or Sunday morning so that we can do something evening-wise, maybe not 4 a.m., unless they want to see our real wild side. But, uh, <laughs> Especially since we haven't been sleeping that much. But uh, So if you're listening and you're tuning in, uh, feel free to go to the Facebook page and then just 
post a question just right up right on the just basically as a as a message right in the or as a uh, on the button. an easy way to get there since we've got this awesome new domain right in the status people, go to yeah. imtimeloop.org I'd love to see a bunch of traffic coming through there and uh, yeah. linking to it but if you click on the uh, what do you call it? what's the symbol called the Ouro Ouroboros yes you got it so anybody clicks on the Ouroboros it'll take you right to our our Facebook page and then the top post right there is our video and if you just comment right underneath the the video um, we're we're monitoring that live. Um, something else to consider is if we could find somebody to monitor this chat for us and try and drive people to the page during during our our short chats. I will occasionally hit the refresh button and see if we've gotten any any uh, comments on there. So far we haven't. So let's. Uh, did we have? I think Nick. I think you created like a good uh, list of topics that we could go through. Uh, one thing that I wanted to do, do you have that video ready to uh, be showed? Yeah, hopefully the, I hope that the audio comes out, but uh, I'm going, okay. let's do that now. Let's all... Uh... Yeah, so so before you play it, I just want to explain it. So this video that you're going to show is actually a video from a, a TED a TED talk, uh, which is basically, if you haven't heard of those before, it's just these uh, series of events where they bring uh, just all kinds of... Uh, very interesting and brilliant in, in their own way uh, people and they give them a limited amount of time I think it's uh, no more than 10 minutes or something to that effect a limited amount of time in order to get a concept out uh, to the audience and then uh, and then they just move to the next one and, and a lot of times they'll have uh, themes uh, before they actually give the talk but this particular video uh, is kind of what inspired me it's kind of a <laughs> A funny little video, but it's what inspired me to really try to do this, and then also try to do it in a way that uh, would bring in as many people as possible uh, to be a part of this. Which is why we're doing what we're doing now. Which is why that we stream, we try to stream everything that we're that we're uh, we're doing. Uh, it's 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 to try to bring everybody in because the as this video will, will explain, uh, leadership is overrated. And really, the uh, the people that make uh, what makes a movement are the are the people in it, and all working together. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you this video. I also showed this video to the Morehead State University uh, Minnesota classroom. Uh, I think they got a kick out of it. So let's see if we can play it, and uh, and we'll just comment uh, on it afterwards. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore, it's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So it takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done <laughs> Now it's not a I love this guy. <laughs> tuna. Three is a crowd, and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers, because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point, and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, remember the importance of nurturing 
registering your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy, and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. <laughs> so that right there, that was uh, that was a, yeah. I saw that, and I was just so completely inspired by it. I mean, it's just magical seeing how that all just kind of happened and grew. And if you kind of uh, if you if you were if you've been following the progress of what's been happening uh, with the I'm Time Loop site, it's been very similar to that. To where we uh, in the beginning it took uh, about a week for us to get the first 100 likes. Uh, the uh, it took about half a week to get the next 100 likes. It took about a day to get the next 100 likes, and then it took about a week to get uh, uh, the first thousand, and then it took about half a week to get the second thousand, and then it just kind of the, the 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 rate at which people are engaging is just exponentially uh, getting faster and faster. To where now we're we're getting uh, about you know we're, we're up to uh, almost forty hours a period per thousand, and we've reached I think with that ten thousand mark that we hit today. Oh yeah, yay, ten thousand! Yes, congratulations yes. on ten thousand, everybody. We're yeah. definitely growing. We yeah. So things are happening so fast that you know that was a big party for us. A few you know a big moment for us just a few hours ago. But we're just continually plugging along. But that first ten thousand, I, you know, that's as far as I'm concerned. That, you know, we've passed the uh, first follower uh, 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 kind of uh, status, and I think that this, all these ten thousand that have come in, is basically like our first, is like first fault. We're like all first followers. Like we're all, we're all. This is like the first. If you if you if you applied that video to the globe. Like these first ten thousand are like that first guy that came up and kind of uh, uh, you know got we did like you know we like slapped his hands we're like yeah look what we did <laughs> and it was just awesome uh, that 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 we've gotten that much uh, uh, acceptance and people are you know, people are I think people are getting the idea and it, it's it's a really interesting idea because uh, I think that there's already there's so many uh, Story stories are already about December twenty first two thousand and twelve. So many uh, you know apocalyptic stories and things like that. So this is a brand new story, I think, for what could potentially happen on this day. But I want to be very clear, and it's in our mission statement that uh, December twenty first two thousand twelve. The, the the only reason that we picked that date, the only reason is. Uh, is because it's a date because we we want this experiment to be successful and in order for this experiment to be successful we need to convince uh, as many people as possible uh, before a certain future date to make a conscious decision to act on that date come back through time and actually visit themselves so we wanted to pick it so we picked a date that has already been kind of imprinted uh, in people's in people's minds already, uh, this date that's coming up, December twenty first, two thousand twelve. There's been thousands of books, well, okay, hundreds of books <laughs> written about this topic. Uh, it's mentioned for the last several years. You know, people have been wondering what's happening. So it's going to stick with us. It's going to stick with us in our mind. It's a future date that it, we hasn't arrived yet, but it's already in there somewhere. So because of that, it it's going to make our future selves, uh, when we ever get, when we do get the chance to be able to uh, jump in a time machine and travel back, it's going to make it a lot easier to remember uh, that date. And that is the only reason why we picked uh, December twenty first, two 
2012. There's, yeah, it's there's, not. There's it's not already. nothing. The criti criticisms, I guess, that I've heard is that we're just trying to draw attention to end of the world type things, and um, I think we've done pretty good at you know explaining that that's not that's not really what we're about at all. But it's just a, that it's got to be a, such a memorable date that you can go back to. And we've heard some other suggestions, but really, this is the big one that that has been written about for for so many um, centuries. Yeah, but it's, the, it's it's I can't think of another future. Of I mean, can you think of another date in our future that you know that people are talking about? I mean, well, you know, is there any other date? I can't think of another date. I think another one might be. Uh, I think, and again, it's another one of these 11, apocalyptic 12, things. I mean, but even so, it's, yeah. it has no significance beyond people that no look at numbers on a calendar. And if you go to Europe, yeah. it's not in order because you look at the dates in in another order. No, so this is the only date that is globally recognized, a future date coming soon, that's globally recognized as having some sort of importance or something that's already been talked about and it's in their heads, in our heads. <clears throat> so it just, it's made sense to use that date. Now, some topics or some people are, are concerned that uh, what we're doing now is some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy that by Pause. us doing this, project. <laughs> we're the reason why the date is we're the reason why the date is important in the first place uh, because it, it's like self-fulfilling or something to that effect. And I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not buying that either. Uh, Part of it is they think that we're going to create uh not not even that we is that somebody any time traveler that comes back and contacts themselves would be a no-no and you'd come up with some paradox that would annihilate uh, you know, time space as a whole, or some. Um, you know, yeah. maybe maybe a better way to think of it is: Have you seen any? You know, we've all seen all, or most people that are fans of this page have seen a lot of uh, movies about time travel, and they all kind of handle it a little bit differently. Um, right. Everyone has a different method. I'm a firm believer uh, that uh, I think that the uh, multi-worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is gonna is gonna play out in the end, and that's a, a good workaround for paradox. Uh, I don't think that there is any way for someone, for us to, uh, you cannot change your past. Uh, uh, if you do end up going into your past, uh, what you're actually, uh, well, there's some scenarios where, and we won't, we'll, we'll talk about this in another talk, but there's uh, some scenarios where your you visiting your past is actually in your timeline, and your timeline needs to. Your timeline wouldn't be your timeline if it wasn't for the fact that you did at some point in your future visit your past. But that's a hard one to, to, to think about. But but really, in general, if you go, if you're going back in time, uh, what you're visiting is a until the point that you enter that timeline, it's I, it's identical to what your past was. It's an exactly the same copy of your past, and it is your timeline. Yeah. But once you enter it, you basically uh, fork off, and now you've created a parallel uh, universe, identical up to that point until you've entered it. And now from that point on, uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want there. It's not. It will never affect your actual timeline. You yeah. basically created a whole other uh, uh, universe that, in which you uh, uh, might. You know the grandfather paradox is you go and you kill your, you kill your own, you kill your dad before you're born, and in that if you if you would like I don't know why you would want to kill anybody, <laughs> and hopefully you don't, but if you wanted if that was your goal and you went and did that yeah and that uh, if, in that particular reality, the only you that would exist would be the, the tra time traveler you because you did kill <laughs> the, per the, the person that would have given birth to your parallel dimension copy of yourself. But your dad uh, still exists and hopefully is still alive in your own uh, in your own uh, timeline. He's still there. You cannot change your, your own past by doing this. So there, I personally feel there's not much of uh, it. There shouldn't be so much fear around the whole uh, travel back in time and, and, and messing things up because you can't mess anything up. Uh, you, you're just creating different, uh, whole different uh, 
but still very amazing. convenient for for um, cinematography and to make the movies yeah. back in the future very exciting yes. and very interesting. And you can see your own hands yeah. disappear. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. And so, speaking of Back to the Future, we just uh, got a great. I haven't read the article yet, but the High Plains Reader uh, just did a feature story on this project, uh, which I think is going to stands. Yeah, either Wednesday or Thursday, I think, is when they come out. But they, on the cover, oh, I got this awesome, amazing chance, and I'm so, I'm just so uh, fortunate <laughs> that I got the opportunity to do it, but they, I got to, you know, get a picture taken with a DeLorean, you know, a DeLorean, like, from the movie. <laughs> and that was awesome, and so basically they uh, did this Back to the Future theme, uh, on their front cover, and if you look on our Facebook uh, page, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm all dressed up like a time traveler, and uh, that is uh, Sabrina right next to me. She's uh, she's one of the founding members of the uh, Bad Weather Burlesque, who have been very instrumental. Uh, they they uh, they've they've been helping us out. They've been helping all of us out uh, so much from the beginning. Uh, just a, just a great group of creative people here in Fargo that that have been really engaged. So just uh, really fortunate. Oh, sorry, sorry, Bella. So um, am I off topic? Yeah, we're, we're a little <laughs> off topic. Let's talk a little bit more about the project okay. and what we need uh, the rest of the yes. what's been going on. Um, so yeah, we've had a, a couple of uh, major mi uh, milestones that we've hit. We hit the uh, the ten thousand mark, which I'm hoping is going to be a tipping point for us to like really. Um, expand our, our growth rate and uh, just last night uh, as I was putting together some some of the promo graphics and things for this fireside chat um, I started posting information on on forms about time travel because uh, there's so many users on on Facebook of course that are active but but if we want to try and get to people that are focused I think that's going to be the next major step so if, if you're uh, watching this chat and you and you participate in any forums or, or blogs uh, message boards um, if you're an avid YouTube uh, commenter, or video commenter, um, you know, consider helping in in that uh, capacity because we really need a lot of hands, I guess, to to probably reach out as far, um, especially with our with our sleep waning. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we, we again, that's like like the video said. It's just you know, leadership is overrated. We, uh, we there's only so much that we can do, and as you know, for this uh, experiment to be successful. Uh, we 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 are hoping to get a million, but uh, if you think about it, there is uh, seven billion people uh, currently on the planet, and uh, out of uh, seven billion people, only five hundred people have ever got a chance to travel into space. And I personally feel that within our lifetime, time travel will be very similar to space travel. At least the opportunity to travel through time will be be be, be similar to what space travel is now. So uh, you currently have a one in fourteen million uh, chance to be an astronaut uh, uh, today, and that's so. Even if we convince a million people uh, to 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 be a part of this uh, experiment, uh, it you know it's we still might not have enough people that there might not be one in those a million people that actually get fortunate enough to uh, to uh, do this in their lifetimes. However, uh, with a million people, uh, you might maybe what we'll get instead of uh, we might get a distant relative, you know, uh, because they were able to pass their, you know, they they personally themselves, even though time travel was invented in their lifetime, didn't get a chance, but maybe they inspired their kids uh, to come back to this date. So then it's their kids that 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 would actually show up, uh, you know, something like that, uh, and. So, also, so, so, so let's say we have one million people, uh, and out of those one million people, uh, only one person is uh, is is crazy enough and excited about this uh, enough to 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 basically go and wait for the decades that it will take in order for us to get uh, to get the technology to do this and then actually do it and actually do it. So, that one person. Was inspired today by this by this experiment that we're doing now. If that one person does get the chance to actually come back, the moment that 
or the millisecond that that person enters our timeline and and reveals himself to uh, our you know to our timeline here at one of these events that we're having, and proves that they're from the future. That moment that that happens, uh, what that causes is instead of just one person that was in initially inspired in our timeline and actually did all the work to actually make it back, now suddenly. At it's that moment, on that our planet, the biggest event on on the planet, it is going it to go down. It like on the history book, something into the future that they is, will well. never forget. That no one on the planet will forget. It'll be something that we'll all all remember. So then, from so that first person that comes back and, and creates that moment, suddenly inspires everybody, and now everybody's like, "Oh, when and and what, 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 another thing is, so that person comes back." And brings us the technology to travel through time. So, so now you know maybe we'll be doing it in ten years because they brought back the the information on how to do this. So now ten years from now, we're also pretty excited, and we're all like, December twenty first was when it happened. December twenty first is when uh, it's socially okay <laughs> to travel through time. So they all come back. To December twenty first. So I mean, it could depend on all all types of things. Uh, you don't know how long it will take. It may be that the further forward in the future that you're coming from, in other words, the greatest time. You don't know how long it's going to take you in physical time to get that far. Maybe we can't go warp two. Maybe it, uh, you know to go back one year actually takes us a month of of experiential times. Um, but uh, nonetheless, of ourselves, yeah, of ourselves. So um, yeah. you know. I've been running into a lot of different places, people saying, well, if I could travel through time, I'll essentially live forever. Well, to the extent that you could send yourself forever into the future, perhaps you consider that living forever, but either way, your biological clock is, is going to be ticking. You know, it does take us a fair amount of time to, to travel to the moon or someplace and beyond, so once you start warping time around you, it's not like we can all, uh, in a frenzied pace, uh, spend the rest of our days traveling through time and being an effective person. Otherwise, I mean, you've got to pay for fuel or whoever, whoever is going to work. But um, I, I wouldn't anticipate that you'll have everybody wasting every moment of time. On the other hand, you may um, you may create a, a new type of historian, somebody that can uh, go and gather yeah. information and technologies and then send it back, um, send it back to whatever your current time is. I think what. What is going to be pretty amazing about this when it happens is that it's going to be revolutionary. It's going to, you know, it's going to be this amazing moment. But then it's going to become very normal. It's going to become like, a ve it's it's like it just becomes like, well, you know, kids are born into a world where this is just how people live. We live in a, a nonlinear way to where we can we can basically create if we would like to. Uh, Slightly dilated video sessions with ourselves in different uh, parallel universes, and work with ourselves on a project together. It's just something that they just kind of take for granted the ability to just kind of use time, or, or, or time is very flexible. Yeah. And I also, like you said, but time, even though we can travel through it, uh, we our own individual personal experience is still going to be have a limit to it. You know. <laughs> And we're, you know, we're gonna, we all are gonna die eventually. <laughs> yeah, you may extend your life to 300 years or something like that. Yeah. Um, so something I've been doing to practice to get my mind around the idea of time travel, and maybe it seems, it may seem trivial here, but um, my podcast player is really great on my phone, and um, to like try and figure out how can you consume another lifetime. I mean, you may want to go and study Adolf, you know, Adolf Hitler, or, uh, Niels Bohr's life or something like that, and it's going to take all that time to observe it. So my podcast viewing has switched to, I've got a player that lets me listen to it at one and a half times and or two times <laughs> original speed, and it just takes the gaps out and it does a pitch adjust and everything. Um, but it's kind of nice because you've got, we're going to have to figure out how to consume an experience in a, in a faster manner. And, and right. even if time travel, uh, the way it actually works out is that you're able to accelerate how fast you're going forward. You've still got to find a way for your brain to start processing. This isn't real time the way you're used to it. Yeah, and, and so this is something that uh, I've been talking to. Uh, so I think another thing that we're going to need uh, when this comes through is we're going to need whole different types of technology in order to handle information. Because right now we have information that comes from a single you know timeline, but I really see in the future what we'll have is all these timelines that can be potentially connected if we'd like them to be, and we need a technology like even like a whole new transport layer that can uh, 
authenticate and verify a, a timeline or where it's come where it's coming from. So you can merge them together. So if you do want to have those interactive video chats with yourself, uh, you can see where you're coming from. You can see what dates you're from. You know, you can see like, is this your future self? What 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 time period am I currently uh, communicating with? Yeah, so there's how to get back there again, especially if you were to make a modification. How could you get back to the reality yeah. where such and such happened? So we got this whole new uh, area to think about when it comes to like designing software because I that's I come from a software design background, so I I'm just really excited to be able to start applying uh, different methods in order to like link uh, different time periods together and authenticate uh, future people and 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 past people. Oh, so this brings up uh, one of the concepts that we're using. Uh, so. Let's say December 21st, 2012, somebody, some random stranger comes in to one of these uh, convergen convergence events somewhere around the world. Yeah, and basically, can we take just a second to talk to just point out that we've got a number of events going yeah. on around around the globe um, so that you've got some place to go. It'll be tough enough to remember where you're at on December 21st. Um, so we're creating uh, events. We've got one in Portland. Uh, we'll have one in Fargo, North Dakota. Is Chicago, Sh Chicago is coming together, I think. Yep. And, uh, we're looking still for some help in other parts of the world. We have one in uh, Puerto Vallarta, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, that uh, Raul is going to actually host. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, we are we have placeholders for uh, uh, an event in Kathmandu, and uh, an event in Egypt, uh, Cairo, because uh, and this is based off of currently how many how many likes we're getting. So so right now. On the Facebook page, we're getting a whole lot of likes from. Well, Kathmandu is just kicking everybody's butt. <laughs> so we have to. I mean, we they there needs to be a space there uh, for this to happen there. And what we'll be doing, or what I'll be doing in, in Fargo, is all throughout the uh, like beginning early Friday morning for me. Uh, we're going to be linking all these events together in the, in like what we're experiencing right now in a Google Hangout. So all these different events from from around the world will all be linked. So as things are happening, uh, everybody can kind of be here and watch it and watch things unfold. So we're also now, talking to you. That means that if you're out there and you're um, yeah. in Kathmandu or if you're in uh, Cairo right now and you maybe have the ability to host an event and would like to on this day, I mean, it's a Friday night, so um, it should be a good opportunity to get out there. We're looking for somebody to host this event for us um, or with us and to, to help us to, to bring these things together. Yeah, all that we ask is that you have is that you are very open and that the place that you, that you host the event has to be open to uh, anybody that would like to come in and be a part of it because it uh, those people that you don't Quite know might actually be the people that uh, have come all this way to be there. <laughs> so you have to have an open place. You have to have a, a, a stable internet connection. Uh, you have to be uh, uh, multilingual enough to be able to communicate with us, so so we can uh, organize the, the details uh, straighten out with you. And you you also have to have a video and sound capabilities in order to uh, stream. Stuff from from your from your from your event. Absolutely. So just so that that that's uh, that's the basics of it. But uh, what what do we anticipate happening? Uh, what would we at some point in the night, wherever you are, uh, we're going to release an opportunity for those that have come from the future, or I suppose from the past, depending on where they've been, um, or when they've been, I guess, um, to step <laughs> forward. Yep. So at at, at midnight. At each uh, host area's time zone, we're, we're going to ask whoever is hosting the party to pause, and at that time, let somebody uh, just to announce, you know, to to the room that if there is any uh, time travelers in the room, to please step forward and let yourselves be known, and to uh, and to verify that uh, they are indeed from the future. And in order to verify that, uh, we basically uh, I don't know, a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, it's going by really fast, we encrypted a message uh, using a pretty strong encryption uh, uh, method, at least for today, <laughs> today's time period. And uh, 
the person from the future, in order to prove themselves, they'll have to uh, basically bring back that message to us uh, decrypted before we actually reveal what the message is. There it is. So on December 21st, 2012, we're going to release this message in plain text to the entire world on that uh, imtimelip.org website. We'll release what it actually says. So if you're from the future, it should be very easy for you to go to that website in the future or wherever it might be at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Take that message with you, bring it back with you, the, the plain text version of it, and hand it over as proof that you are actually from the future. Yeah, it's essentially so, just a, it's a matter of printing out an image. So uh, we don't expect yeah. somebody in the future to have decrypted it themselves with some sort of no. image technology or anything. It's just a matter of... Uh, of nope. printing the image that we've made available, but that would not have been available uh, up until uh, up until after we, our events. So we we only have one encrypted message, and uh, we so we we aren't actually going to reveal what it really says until uh, uh, midnight Central Standard Time. So if people start bringing messages, you know, if there's a whole group of people in Kathmandu that show up with uh, a message and here in Fargo we're watching it uh, you'll probably see me go off the screen for a little bit and what I'm actually doing off the screen is jumping up and down and and cussing and like being like totally out of control because uh, I'll, I'll have known <laughs> at that point that holy crap we got time travelers however we will not actually release the message until the uh, midnight Central Standard Time. So, uh, if you are having these parties, uh, it might be a can do that your party is over. But uh, pay attention. And make sure that you've got those messages that you've collected them because they might. I don't know what I don't know what a time travel might do. It might be that he's there for a little bit. He or she or it <laughs> is there for a little bit, and then they just go back. Or it might be that they just hang out. You know, they're like they. We've created this period on the planet that from that point forward it's perfectly legit for them to be like completely in the open especially if uh, not just one shows up but you know thousands it's the because, ultimate uh, mixer it would be the ultimate yeah. mixer there is safety in numbers for the time traveler I think right now if you are a time traveler it's probably not very safe to be a lone time traveler and reveal yourself to the world but if you suddenly have this ability for thousands of time travelers to show up at the same time uh, and all reveal themselves at re relatively the same time, uh, there's safety there, and so maybe you'll just hang out. Occupy time. Occupy time. Occupy time! Let's make a slogan on that! <laughs> so maybe you'll hang out, and, uh, and if you do hang out, stick around because we will be revealing that message uh, on uh, December 21st, 2000, with the actual decrypted message, and then it's going to be this spectacular party where you know everybody can you can hold up you know the time travelers can hold up their decrypted message next to the decrypted message that we just released and and Nick Joyride and I are the only ones who have already forgotten what this message says <laughs> because I we put it in there uh, encrypted it yeah. And I kind of know what it says. You made me but delete my. I deleted my end of the decrypted yeah. message. You deleted your end of it, and uh, I don't even we, know. I don't. I have no idea where it's even stored right now. What if we can't? De well, we'll decrypt it. We we have redundancy. So I, if if I get hit by a bus, uh, Nick can still do it. If Nick gets hit by a bus, I can still do it. Hopefully, neither one of us do. <laughs> but we have redundancy, uh, and uh, so yeah, we're pretty excited to. Uh, see what happens on that day. Yeah, what's and we, great is we that can we can actually it. say we want to see what happens because um, it's not important for us and a lot of people made, you know, there's there's been some comments that we don't have all the answers. Well, that's actually the truth. We don't have, exactly. we don't know what the technology is going to be. We don't know if the people will arrive on a horse, uh, some animal <laughs> yet, if it's going to be a giant wooden elephant or um, um, or whether it's in, you know, Ooh. own booth or a, you know, time I, traveling. 
metal yeah. elephant. Who knows how it's going to come? It could be. <laughs> it could be that when we come back or when you travel, you have to take a neutral body form. That could be. Maybe that's what um, observers and aliens and all these types of reports actually are. Is that you've got to take a neutral. You know, you just don't. We don't have the answers, but we're trying to create a place where we can start to, to start to solve. Um, yep. Answer these questions. So our, our main goal isn't. I mean, we would love to pull, uh, to prove time travel is possible and, and create this event, but uh, we we don't know if it's going to be successful, and we're we're basically going to just continue trying this. So if December twenty first, two thousand twelve doesn't work, uh, you know, if we didn't get enough people. If that one person didn't quite make it, uh, what you, what you're going to see is on that imtimeloop.org page, we're going to put one tick mark on it. And that particular that tick will basically be a link to that message that's been decrypted. So potentially now, if you also follow the multi-world interpretation of quantum mechanics, it very well could be that our timeline is one of the only timelines where it wasn't successful, and and in many other timelines, uh, we got visited, and we just happened to be the unlucky timeline that no one showed up to say hi. But that's why we're we continue to put the uh, we're going to continue to put that message onto that uh, page no matter what. So as we get into the future, when we finally do prove time travel, maybe we have 20 ticks on that page, which is 20 different messages that have been decrypted uh, on December 21st. Because I think what I'd like to declare right now <laughs> in front of everybody is that December 21st. No matter what year it is, it just happens to be that this is the first year we're doing it, 2012. December 21st is International Time Traveler Aware Awareness Day. <laughs> so, so, so basically, we're going to do this every year on the 21st, and we're going to put another tick. And so, each one of those ticks is is a new uh, decrypted message. So, if you if you do come from, if we so let's say 30 years from now, we have the ability to eventually to finally. Uh, travel back through time. Now we have 30 ticks uh, throughout uh, this timeline that we can pick any one of them and bring back that message and verify who we are. So we have the ability to create this okay experience for time travelers, like this, 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 this uh, safe day, sort of like the uh, safe you know, day, safety day, where you can, or yeah, it's out. a safety day for time travelers, and so. Up until that point, you have all these different dates that me, as a future time traveler, can pick any one of them because I have my passport. I have that decrypted message, and I could go back to any of those time zones or any of those time periods and any of those timelines where that exists. The where this I am time loop org experiment exists. I can go to any of them, bring back my little ticket, and have a great party. <laughs> so and, and basically, you know. Have this great. Uh, and that, that's a, that would be the safe day. So if it's not widely available that you can travel uh, to any date, that should be the safest date because you'll be among other other travelers, hopefully. Um, yeah. So that's how we would prove that a time traveler is legitimate. Um, kind of going back to our agenda, where we got about ten minutes left in the in the uh, broadcast tonight, the fireside chat. Um, Maybe we could talk for a second about the groups that we have contacted and thank them for, for interaction and maybe what would be coming in the future sure. in terms of uh, Project Pegasus possibly giving us an interview. Um, you have also talked to a couple of futurists and, and, and those groups as well that have been um, sending some traffic our direction. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Andrew Bassaggio is the, uh, he's the founder and he's been basically like a, a bell ringer for uh, time travel for, I don't know, a decade, maybe longer. Uh, and basically, he's he's been he's trying to petition the government to. Uh, uh, he feels that the government currently has uh, under wraps, top secret uh, uh, programs in which they're time traveling already, uh, and he has some firsthand experience with this. And he's uh, petitioning uh, the government right now, uh, as we speak, uh, to release this technology in in. Um, and directly, I think uh, teleportation is the one that he's focusing on the most, because uh, I guess uh, he feels that that's one of the uh, that's a technology that can really uh, help our our society is that ability to just be anywhere that we'd like to be like instantly through uh, through teleportation. So he's he's petitioning now to get that uh, to get that released, and uh, he has uh, he's got he's already uh, you know he's been doing this for, for for quite some time. He's got got a great group. 
on there uh, full of people who are really interested in the topic uh, of time travel and, 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 and things like that. So he was uh, inspirational to this uh, project and he's, uh, he's been supportive. So thank you, Ant. Thank you, Andy, and thank you to any any of the members of the Project Pegasus group because uh, you guys are the you guys have been doing this for a long time, <laughs> and uh, and we've just been doing it for uh, since October fifteenth, but it's uh, uh, it's, uh, it's really been uh, going quickly. So. so yeah, I mean, we definitely have I think a role to play, but there's so many roles that are coming together. We've got um, again more than ten thousand people on our Facebook um, fan page, and that's growing, and hopefully we see it grow exponentially. Especially if you can um, share our page, we would be reaching five million people if uh, if all of the current fans were to share one single message, and um, and if we could, um, we want to reach it more than more than a million. So five million would be great. So, um, but but ultimately, there's a lot of different roles. So each of you that have been taking and uploading um, user-generated content and uploading pictures of yourself and changing your Facebook status to the pledge. Um, oh yeah, thank you so much. That's. That's awesome. Uh, I've, I've, as people like the page, uh, we get a, a nice scroll of 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 you as you're coming in, and and I look at we're looking at every one of those and just like because as you're going through them, you see that some of them have actually used some of you have actually you know put that banner on the top of your page, and that's for that's that's freaking awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's uh, uh, also to people that are posting great articles and um, uh, upcoming other webcasts and, and scientific findings that that are coming out. Um, yeah. We've got great articles that seem to be coming out at a, a fever a fever pace, and and I don't think it's merely because we're generating a larger audience. I really feel like the uh, the scientific breakthroughs that are breaking down the incremental steps um, to really understanding the direction of time's arrow and um, the the um, Basics of what uh, the space-time connection is, how to understand another dimension, the, the 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 pace at which we're getting technologies demonstrated and uh, that papers are are being um, written and put out is is increasing. So it's, yeah, exponential. Similar, sim it, 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 exp it seems like we're all kind of experiencing kind of the the same like rapid uh, growth period right now, or rapid you know uh, where technology is advancing very quickly. Uh, it's it's. Uh, it's just a great time to be alive. Uh, it's just awesome. Uh, what we also have in store for you is we we did say we we're going to release that sneak peek of the uh, of the of the actual pledge video. So this is uh, we're going to release that here in five minutes, uh, yeah. which will be at the end of this. I'm going to play it. On, I'll play it on this pot. This like sharing my screen like we did last perfect. time. But also I'm going to post put the link on a comment on the video. And then uh, maybe right after we get done with this, we'll talk about uh, writing a little description and, and releasing it on the page, and we'll push it out with a big... Perfect. And uh, if you're watching this, and if you know anyone watching this, please share this teaser video. It's going to be amazing. We've got a, a audio uh, composed by uh, of, uh, Vincent, DJ Vincent Favard from France, um, and that the audio is, is original. The video from uh, victoriousvideo.net is um, is awesome, the way they did the infinite white screen. But it's also important to note that if you'd like to make your own video, please do it. Post it on your wall. Do it. Hey, I am yes. The piece of cake. Make. Oh, we're going to put together something that's got amazing um, you know, production quality, but that's that's not all it takes. My first video was done with Photo Booth. And it was very weird in in in, uh, in the library of my house. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, so our budget on this is very limited. So basically, everybody that's been a part of this so far has 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 worked for uh, nothing. Well, either nothing or beer and pizza. You know, beer and pizza mm -hmm. has basically fu fueled everything that that we've made, and uh, it's just been great. Uh, so I, I think that that kind of wraps up. That's our that's our one hour. This is fun, Nick. I, I like this format pretty well. This is good. Hopefully, uh, next time uh, we'll get some questions, and maybe if you are watching this video because I think it uh, gets queued up. Yeah, as soon as it's done, um, the whole video is going to pop up, and uh, uh, it should sh should flow up every place it's been shared. So go ahead and view yeah, it and so share it with your friends and and uh, your science-minded people, or I don't even know what to call it. It's sort of science, <laughs> sort of humanities. It's sort yeah. of it's hopeful. <laughs> it's hopeful. It's hope, yeah.
and so share it, but comment on it at, with your questions so that the next time we do this, we'll, we, we, we will do our best. And if you would like to be a part of it, you can join this too. If you are if you're doing research on time right now, if you're a physicist and you have and you have interesting ideas, if you would like to be a part of the conversation, uh, we'd love you to be in this the next time around as well. Just uh, let's all let's all let's all talk. Yeah. So let's collect some materials. Um, hopefully, we can do a one-hour special that just talks on um, timelines and paradox. Something where we, we can actually yeah. click over and show the. Um, show images that describe what it is we're talking about. Um, and uh, if you work for any media organizations or have an outlet that we can talk to or work with, um, we would like to talk to you. And uh, whether it's radio, television, if you're a blogger, uh, if you do a video podcast, um, it looks like Bella might have fallen asleep from the heat from my... Uh, oh, oh, she woke up. Oh, from my fireplace here. <laughs> All right, so are we uh, going to watch this video? Yeah, I've got it queued up here. I'm going to go right, and, uh, screen share it. Let's see. <clears throat> screen. And uh, you'll have a high-quality version of it ready for you uh, on our Facebook page. Ha, 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 yes. All right, got to drag this over this side. Swap my camera over. So thanks again, everybody, that uh, viewed today. Share the videos that we've got. Share the content. Participate with us. We want your help. Um, and uh, you're as much as a, of a team as uh, of the team as we are. Um, you know, uh, participate. It's pretty, uh, so far it's been really excellent. And uh, um, this isn't nearly over. And someone's got to be on, uh, I don't know how to even finish that sentence. I'm rather tired. It's the sleep. This is let's just do this so we can go to bed. No, <laughs> actually, we got hours of work to do tonight yet on videos. I'm shutting up. All right. Um, can you see? Can you see the thing? Yeah. Are you seeing my screen? I can see it. Yep. Okay. Now I think I've even made it the main video, and here it is. I am iconoclastic. Je suis passionné. I am sassy. Anna Vajnuna. I am classic. Thoughtful. Colorful. Open-minded. Loving. Brain dead. Love. Water. I am timely. Yeah. <laughs> that's so good. That's fun. And I love so it. that that's basically that is going to be the opening then of uh, of 14 different uh pledges. And in those you'll you'll have a small chance where you kind of get to uh there's going to be a, a, a some intimate moments with the the pledge person where we're just talking with them, asking them some questions and just kind of uh just letting you get to know them a little bit and then uh then they, they, they go into where they will actually say, <clears throat> I solemnly swear if at any point in my life I have the ability to travel through time and space, I will visit myself on December 21st, 2012. So they say that. And then amazingly, through through high graphic technologies that they had, they've done here at the Victorious Video <laughs> and Casey, they, uh, their future self comes in and they get to interact with their future self. And then that's that's basically how each pledge video goes. So, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yay, ten thousand! Nice. Hopefully, we uh, continue to pick up the pace. Thanks to everyone that joined us today. And uh, for uh, for the record books, um, this is Nicholas Goodroad. I solemnly swear, if at any point in life I have the ability to travel time and space, I am going to visit myself on December twenty first, two thousand twelve. I will see you at a time loop convergence party in a couple of weeks. Love you, Nick. See you in a little bit. All right.